Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we are going to discuss more about environmental bar technology. So let's get started. So previously, we talked about fresh water habitat and some of its region. So the some of its region as we discussed were littoral zone, limnetic zone, lenthic zone. So talking about all of these, we have already discussed in the previous video. So you may check it out. So moving on from here. So talking about some of the factors on which it is dependent. So these are some of the basic factors on which most of the uh, environment or habitat depends on, which are temperature, light and oxygen content. So depth from the surface decides thermal stratification and the lowest zone is the hypolimian and the upper zone is the epilimian. So basically uh, in ocean or river, the upper zone or the lower zone is uh, demarcated here. So the upper zone is the epilimian and the lower zone is the hypolimian. So the lower zone is the coldest where all the decomposers are present and the upper zone, which is the which is called as the epilimian where all the uh, uh, marine organisms such as fish and other organisms are present as they receive proper sunlight and oxygen content. So also in the lowest zone, there is no penetration of sunlight. So, uh, so that region receives no sunlight and remains the coldest. And generally, uh, no marine organisms live in, uh, cannot survive in that sort of conditions. So that's why only decomposers are present there. And on the uh, upper zone, all the marine organisms are present due to the presence of sufficient nutrient content and uh, sunlight. So in the above zone, there is a band of rapid temperature variable zone. This is called a thermocline. So obviously in the upper zone, uh, there is a good regulation of temperature due to presence of sunlight. All of the necessary conditions are satisfied and that is known as the thermocycling. So when the temperatures of two zones are close enough, the water begin to mix again to create a uniform temperature and even term as lake turnover. So definitely the zones of two uh, mix to create a ideal temperature for the two so that the marine organisms can survive. So this mixing is known as the lake turnover. Also light and amount of oxygen present in the epilimian is more than that of hypolimian. So definitely uh, the upper zone has a lot of a lot of light and oxygen content as compared to the lower zone and it affects the vegetation producers and consumers. Uh, so definitely it will affect as uh, in the lower zone there is no almost uh, no sort of marine organisms present and definitely it affects the uh, vegetation or the producers or the consumers. So talking about this, this we just talked about. So we have discussed about littoral zone, limnetic zone and all of the benthic zone. So the benthic zone is the bottommost part whereas limnetic zone is the uh, a bit deeper part whereas the littoral zone is just the shallowest part. The starting of the sea or the upper part of the sea is the littoral zone whereas if we go a bit deep this is the limlentic zone and absolutely bottom which is the benthic zone. All right and also we have demarcations such as euphoric zone, euphoric zone. So uh, the upper layer which is the uh, warmer layer and the uh, lower layer which is the hypolimian which is the coldest layer. So moving on from there, so talking about some of the producers and consumers in the marine organisms. So in this ecosystem or the living biota in the lentic ecosystem. So we have some of the primary producers, which is the phytoplankton. So the phytoplankton is a, uh, a primary or a basic producer that we will find in every sort of marine or any any sort of uh, lentic or limb lentic ecosystem. So phytoanctons include algae or autotrophic algae, prokaryotic and eukaryotic producers. So these are some of the organisms such as uh, cyanobacteria, dinoflagellates, or uh, coccolithophores. So and there are other consumers. So talking about the consumers, we have the zooplankton. Zooplanktons are termed as consumers and which include eggs and larvae of large animals such as fishes, annelids and crustaceans. So the bacteria uh, bacteria plankton are the decomposers here. So phytoplankton is the producer, whereas zooplankton is the consumer, and bacteroplankton is the decomposer, which includes bacteria and archaea. Moving on from there, so talking about some of the regions which are dominated by these habitats. 
So the autotrophs uh, are the green plants and chemosynthetic organisms. So these are the autotrophs in the marine organisms or the, in the oceans or any sort of eco ecosystem, marine ecosystem. The phagotrophs are the macro consumers are herbivores, carnivores or omnivores. So these are big uh, consumers as you can see the sharks and all of the bigger organisms present in the water. And saprophytes are all of the decomposers. So all of the bacteria and algae are the decomposers here. So and from here. So talking about another term which is the estuarine habitat. So what is it? So it is basically a transition between river and ocean. And it is semi-enclosed coastal body of water that has free connection with the open sea. All right. And as you can see, it has a diagram also. So basically it connects to the ocean so small lakes or small streams of water connect with the river and these river finally flow to the sea so examples such as salt, uh, salt marshes are where salt marshes are grassy wetlands at the edges of estuaries high level of nutrients in both of the water making estuaries among the most productive natural habitats and strongly uh, strongly affected by tidal actions home to many living things such as fish, blue crab, shrimps, oysters, and abundant mangro mangroves trees found. So definitely it's a transition between river and ocean, right? So moving on from there, so talking about the marine habitat. So what all does it include? So talking about marine habitat, it constitute of 97% of world's water in salt lake contained in oceans and saline lakes and it is the highest biodiversity observed in them and it, uh, and it has numerous species of plants and animals which live in the ocean and it which generates about 32 percent of world's net primary productions so major oceans which are that we all know that which are the pacific atlantic indian southern and arctic oceans so on the depth and distance from the shore decides temperature salinity depth uh, sunlight and nutrient affecting biodiversity so all of these factors are responsible for marine habitat so as we have discussed about marine habitat and we can see all of the consumers producers and everything here so this is the littoral zone this is the benthic zone this is the middle part is the limnantic zone so all of these organisms are present and these are subdivided further as you can see in the epiplasic zone mesoplasic zone Pathiplasic zone. So I'll be discussing about all of these. So moving on from there. So talking about the intertidal zone. So what is the intertidal zone? So we have heard about tides and what is the intertidal zone or the intertide? So the organisms in the intertidal zone are submerged in seawater at high tides and exposed to air and sunlight at low tide. So these are organisms definitely. So these are submerged in seawater at high tide and exposed to air and sunlight at low tide and these constantly changing communities due to waves and currents and these are sub subjected to regular and extreme variations in temperature these are present at the rocky coasts these are stratified vertically where only highest tides reach uh, a few species of algae and mollusks these are submerged during high tides and these are more diverse array of algae and small animals such as herbivores, snails, crabs, snail, sea stars, small fishes, and bottom of the intertidal zone. So these are only exposed during lowest tides. Many invertebrates, fishes, and seaweeds can be found. So moving on from there, so talking about the pelagic zone. So what is this? So we talked about intertidal zone. So this is depends. So a pelagic zone depends on how the sea uh, how the sea is. And there can be up to five horizontal layers in the ocean from the top to down. So now we'll talk about some of the sub layers of the ocean. All right. So we talked about littoral, limnantic, and benthic zone. So we'll just move to the sub layers of it. All right. So starting with the pelagic zone. So the entire thing is called the pelagic zone. So the entire so for the entire layers of all of the which contains all of the sub parts is entirely named as pelagic zone. So under pelagic zone, we have many other layers. The first layer, which is the epipelagic zone, which is the topmost layer, which is the photozone, photozone. 
which is the ocean from the surface level to 200 meters. This is the illuminated zone. This is the region where photosynthesis can occur. And plants and animals are largely concentrated in this zone. The region where photosynthesis occurs, yes. And flora and flora, flora includes plankton, surface, seaweeds, and fauna includes many species of fish and some mammals such as whales and dolphins. So they feed on abundant planktons. So these are this is the uppermost layer, all right, for the ocean, which is the epipelagic zone or the photic zone. So moving to the second layer, which is the mesopelagic zone, which is the twilight region. So from 200 meters, it goes down to 1000 meters. And although some light penetrates this layer, it is insufficient for photosynthesis. And at about 500 meters, the water also becomes depleted of oxygen. Still, life corps with more efficient gills and uh, minimized movements. So definitely, it is not ideal for photosynthesis. But at some point of time, some organisms can uh, are able to do so. So some of the examples are swordfish, squid, wolfish, and some species of cuttlefish. And many organisms that live in this zone are bioluminescent. And some creatures living in the mesoplasic zone will give rise to epiplasic zone at night in order to feed. So definitely these are, uh, in this region, all of the organisms remain hungry or are deficient with food. So definitely they move to the upper layer for, in order to feed themselves. So moving to this, the next layer we have is the bathypelagic zone, which is the midnight region. So this is the lowest region that we have is that goes down to 4000 meters. And at this step, the ocean is pitch black and there is no living plant life. And occasionally bioluminescent organisms present such as lanternfish and other organisms are definitely present. Also, most animals have living here, surviving by consuming the detritus, falling from the zones above, which is the marine snow. Also, other examples of this zone inhabitants are giant squid, smaller squids, and Dumbo octopus. The giant squid is hunted here by deep diving sperm whales. So this is the lowest region in which feed on detritus. All right, moving on with this. So this is the lower midnight region, which is lower to the bathic pelagic region and below 4000 meters definitely and very few creatures are sufficiently adapted to survive the cold temperatures because no light reaches and nothing is available here and high pressures and cold temperatures are the significant features of abyss abyssopelagic region which is the lower midnight region and some of the organisms are present such as basket star swimming cucumber and these species at this depth have adapted to transparent and eyeless as a result of total lack of light in this zone. Moving on with this, we have the next region, which is the Hadopelagic region, which goes even down, which is the deep water in ocean trenches. This zone is almost unknown and very few species are known to live here in open areas. Also, however, many organisms living, live in hydrothermal vents in this and other zones. So some define the hydropelagic as water below 6,000 meters, where in a trench or not. So this is the lowest region that we have here. So this is the next part that will I that I'm going to cover in the next video. So let's just keep this video till here. So hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned and thank you for watching this video.